Hi, I'm Ellen, and today I'm going to show you how to make a large size concrete planter silicone mold. You'll see that I made this using pieces of pink foam insulation that you can just pick up at any home improvement store like Home Depot. The foam held up great as a form box, and I wouldn't hesitate to use it again for a large mold. I want to mention that I was given this material to try at no charge from Alumalite, who makes the silicone, and I'm under absolutely no obligation to say anything good about it, but it really is good. I really, I really, really like it. It was durable and it was easy to work with. I linked to this, to the silicone in the description below, and you can also get my 10% discount code is there, and the rest of the material information is there as well. One thing that you want to make sure you do before you, you get started in this project is make sure that you know how much silicone material you're going to need. Alumalite has a calculator on their website and I've also linked to that. Um, you want to make sure that you have enough material. If for some reason you end up having more material, I recommend making a smaller mold of some kind so that if you have extra, you can use it for that so that it doesn't get wasted. I ended up needing 15 pounds of silicone material. So that was each container is five pounds. So that was 10 pounds total. So I actually needed four containers altogether, but for the two containers, I only needed to use half. So again, make sure you know that you, how much you're going to need and always have an extra mold set up so that you, if you do have extra, you can use it for that. Now let's get to it so I can show you how to make this. Measure the width of the bowl, then add an extra three quarters to each side for the mold box. This is the minimum amount of space you'll need for leverage for this size mold when you're demolding your concrete planter. Mark three quarters of an inch in from each corner to give you a guide where to place the bowl. Place the bowl near the corner of the foam board where you made the marks and trace a circle around it. Now just make two more three quarter inch marks on the other sides and then draw straight lines to make a box around the bowl. This will be the square base for your mold. Two sides of my box are nine inches and the other two are 11 inches. The nine inch sides will fit inside the longer sides in order for me to be able to secure them. The height of the sides will be the height of the bowl plus three quarters of an inch for the silicone material and one inch for the foam base. Draw the side pieces onto the foam board and then cut them out. When cutting, do your best to keep the blade straight so it's perpendicular with the floor so that your sides will be straight. When I secured the block mold form together, I took a shortcut and used hot glue, but I recommend using 100% silicone caulk instead. You'll get a much better seal. It's just that silicone caulk takes longer to dry. I noticed that some pieces fit better in a certain direction, and so I ended up labeling my pieces. Caulk the sides to the base, as well as to each other at the corners. Even if you have caulked the form box instead of gluing it, I recommend using duct tape to wrap around the outside of the base and also to seal the outside seam. Mm -hmm. 
And last, caulk the inside seams at the bottom and up the corner. One thing to note is that I chose not to fill in the corners of this mold, which would have cut down on the amount of silicone material I needed. I did this because with a mold this size, demolding can be difficult. Larger corners will provide extra leverage to be able to get that glass mold out and your concrete planter. If you want to save on silicone material, you can pack the corners in with either an oil-based clay or square them off with more foam insulation board. Glue the bowl to the circle inside the box. Try to get the glue close to the edge, but don't go past the edge. This will help give your concrete planter clean edges. Glue a straw to the center. This will act as a drainage hole for the planter. Now you'll use cooking oil spray to lubricate the bowl to help with its release. Only use a small amount and also wipe it in so the oil is spread evenly on the bowl. I didn't remember to do this and glass tends to stick to silicone more than most materials, so removing it was challenging, to say the least. Mix the silicone parts A and B together into a large plastic container. I needed one full container of each mix and half of a second container of each. So I poured the half containers first into a large pitcher that had measurements. Then I poured the full containers into my large mixing bucket. When mixing this type of silicone, it's very important that you scrape the sides and bottom of each container to get all the mix. This will help ensure you have equal amounts of both A and B. You should probably be mixing this for at least three to five minutes with such a large amount of mix. Pour this into the mold starting at its lowest point. Let it overflow into the bowl and stop once you reach the top of the form box. This will need to cure for 18 to 24 hours, depending, depending on room temperature. I did have extra silicone material left over, so it's good I had made the extra mold form so it wasn't wasted. You can see my mold leaked a bit on this lower left corner because I used hot glue instead of silicone caulk. To fix it, I used oil-based clay to pack in the area that was leaking, and it did the trick. Remove the mold from the box by cutting through the tape and silicone caulk or glue. It helps to use leverage, so if you have a putty knife or anything shaped like one, it will be much easier. I used a chisel.
Remember earlier when I mentioned that I forgot to use lubricant and demolding the glass bowl was challenging? Well, ugly is a bit more like it. Use needle nose pliers to remove the straw. You may need a heat gun to soften the glue first. Now you're ready to cast the planter. I wanted the planter to be gray and my mix was off-white, so I added a little bit of black pigment to the mix. I recommend placing the mold on a big tile or very flat board. This is really helpful for vibrating to help reduce air bubbles, which causes pinholes. The mix I used is Cementol, which sets within 10 to 15 minutes and cures normally in an hour. You'll want the consistency to be like a milkshake. Place a new straw in the drain hole and then spray the mold with cooking spray. Make sure the oil gets inside the mold and try to wipe it in evenly. If you're using a quick setting cement like I was, it's a good idea to lubricate the mold before you start mixing the cement. As usual, I forgot. And of course my cement had already started setting so I needed to add more water. Pour the mix into the mold and be sure it gets into all the voids. Fill it so that it's just under level with the top, not all the way because it's going to extend your line like my did. You'll see at the end the way the planter looks if I have an extra lip. So keep it just under that, right where I have it there is perfect. To vibrate a silicone mold, I like to lift and tap it with the tile on my work surface. You'll see I used my fist here to tap the sides, but this allowed air to get in. With soft-sided molds, you shouldn't do this. I thought that this was rigid enough it was safe, but I did end up with a fair amount of pinholes. Because this is so large, you should vibrate it for a good bit of time. Keep watching for air bubbles to rise to the surface. Once they slow or stop, then you should be good. I let this cure overnight, even though this particular mix can technically cure in an hour. I let it cure overnight because I know that something this large is going to take longer. I also wanted it to gain strength so that I didn't risk it cracking when demolding. Once the concrete planter has cured, you can demold it by first removing the straw. Then loosen each edge. After that, use leverage on the corners and jimmy it out. I found that working on one side first worked best and then moving to the opposite side. Putting a towel underneath is a safety measure in case the planter pops out quickly. You don't want it to crack from dropping out too fast. You see my foot up there? Sometimes you just really got to get into it. Once the concrete planter is out, you can sand the rough areas, which will be the areas that were exposed to air while curing. 